Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle Supplement Science Report. Today's topic is going to be blood donation. Now, a lot of bodybuilders out there have very high hemoglobin and hematocrits. Hemoglobin, hematocrit, red blood cells, okay, that's what the body uses to carry oxygen. So in our body, we have uh, red blood cells. These are produced in the bone marrow. And these red blood cells have hemoglobin inside of them. And the hemoglobin is what carries the oxygen and delivers this oxygen to the tissues of our body. The more red blood cells we have in our body, the better the body can deliver oxygen, okay? Endurance athletes, okay, specifically want high red blood cells, high hemoglobin. And the term hematocrit is just the amount of thickness in the blood, the density of the red blood cells, how much you have in there. They're all pretty much e equivalent to each other. So if you have high hemoglobin, you have high red blood cells, you have high red bloods, you have high hematocrit, okay? Um, in the bodybuilding world, we hear high hemoglobin, hematocrit, red blood cells, the doctors, they go crazy, they think you're gonna get a blood clot and die, okay? But think about endurance athletes. They blood dope, which means they pull blood out of their body, let their bodies produce more blood cells, and they put it back in so they have more red blood cells so they can do, perform at a much higher level when they're cycling or running or doing their endurance athletes, more oxygen carrying capacity. They take EPO, which is known as erythropoietin, a hormone that stimulates the bone marrow to produce red blood cells. Back in the day before they had that, they took anabolic steroids because we know anabolic steroids cause the bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. That sounds like a bad thing, right? Because the doctors villainize it. But if you think about it, the steroids are making our bodies produce more red blood cells, which is increasing oxygen carrying capacity to our muscles. But it's not causing the red blood, excuse me, not causing the bone marrow to produce more platelets. Platelets are what cause the, the blood to get sticky, to cause clots, okay? So while you may have more red blood cells, most people's platelet levels are normal. Matter of fact, I see a lot of blood work and I notice even in myself, platelet levels seem to be lower in bodybuilders who have high hemoglobin hematocrits. I don't know why that is. It's kind of interesting though. Maybe when the body senses that there's extra red blood cells, it actually reduces platelet count because it doesn't want to cause clots in the body. So the question is, should you donate blood to lower your hemoglobin, hematocrit, and red blood cell count, okay, if it's too high or if it's higher than what we would consider normal? Well, since when do bodybuilders ever want to be normal? We don't want normal red blood cells. We want higher red blood cells just like we want higher testosterone so we can deliver more oxygen to the muscles, so they can work harder, so they can grow better. When you're in the midst of competition, you don't want to reduce red blood cell count. You know, if you're in an off-season, and you're detoxifying from anabolics, and you're cleaning out, and you want to maybe donate some blood because you're not feeling so good, and fine. Personally, I never donated blood while I was competing, okay? And I actually wrote a, an article in the school newspaper. I was a pain in the ass even in high school. In high school, I, I wrote for the school newspaper. This was back in 1985 or 1985. And they had put out, the principal had put out, or vice president principal had put out, a notation telling everyone to donate blood. And in the, in the little memo they put out, this little flyer, they said it will not, you know, it has no negative health benefits whatsoever. Give the blood, it's, we're doing a blood drive. So I wrote an article in the newspaper stating that this was irresponsible to say this in this flyer because I said for people who are athletes, and remember in high school, these athletes are going for college scholarships, that, that we have runners, we have, you know, football players, soccer players. You don't want to compromise your oxygen carrying capacity if you're an athlete who's trying to perform at the highest level to achieve scholarships and, and win games. So I wrote an article that it was irresponsible for the vice, oh, I didn't say vice principal, whoever put the memo out, I didn't know at the time, to put this out because it will hamper performance. And I even at the time quoted the fact that athletes or runners were blood doping at the time to increase red blood cell count. So why would we want to reduce it as athletes and why wouldn't that affect performance? Of course it will. Vice principal got pissed off, pulled, called me down to the office. I said, let's have a debate about it. What did I say that was wrong? And he really could, he's like, you're, you're disrupting the, the blood drive. I said, well, I don't care. You're disrupting my athletic season. And you might be disrupting some of these other athletes that you're taught, deceiving into thinking that it's not going to hurt their performance. And it will. It absolutely will. You know it will. It's logic and it's science. And, you know, I got... It was, the, it was the beginning of, of the end. It was the beginning of my antagonism for uh, authority, you know. But it was true. It was absolutely true, and it is true today. 
as bodybuilders, we go to the gym to train. When we're training, we're pushing at 110%, okay? We're doing that so that we can maximally stimulate muscle. If I can do three extra reps in my squat with 600 pounds because I have better oxygen carrying capacity, I'm gonna break down more muscle tissue and I'm gonna grow more. So the last thing you wanna do is donate blood in, in that time zone, okay? Now, if I'm a guy who's done competing and I'm looking just to be healthy and wanna have normal blood pressure and I go to the doctor because I'm on HRT and I'm a little high, and I'm high in, in red blood cells and I, and I feel like my blood pressure is high and I'm not feeling so good, maybe I'm getting headaches, you know, maybe I'll donate blood. I've only donated blood once or twice personally, and I, I just don't think it's necessary. I think it's, it's something that knee-jerk response, because they see the high red blood cells, they think it's no good, and they don't assess it in, in conjunction with the fact that the platelets are normal. If the platelets are high too, okay, different story. You don't want high platelets in the body and high red blood cells. That's a, a recipe for disaster. Now. If you had high red blood cells and you dehydrate yourself too much, also the, the red blood cells can sludge. So there's a level of too high and then there's a level of high but okay. And you know, I think you need to assess on an individual basis based on your health history as to what's okay and what's not okay. And to just knee jerk say you should always donate blood when your red blood cells are too high is probably irresponsible on the doctor's part. And I just think that they don't understand the context in which it's coming. They think, oh, anabolic steroids, gonna kill the person, high red blood cells, dangerous, get rid of them. That's not the case. It's never that clear and cut. Think about what you're doing in the gym, what your goals are, what your health assessments are. Do you have clots in your body? Do you have problems with your heart? If you're healthy, don't touch your red blood cells. I'm Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle Supplement Science. Thank you.